Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, talking about open source. Joining me for this segment is Matt Ponce, a full stack developer. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so so Matt, we, we, we were talking off camera about, you know, just how, I mean, open source has been around for a while now, but you know, the, the relevance, uh, you know, in, in the community overall and, you know, how, how fast things are changing. Uh, can you give us just a little bit of background, you know, what you do, how you first got involved uh, in, you know, using and then contributing with open source? Sure. Uh, so right now I'm, uh, like you said, a full stack developer, taking on freelance projects primarily in Rails, which is back in Ruby. Uh, got my start two summers ago. Um, I had no background in technology, no background in programming. Roommate was using it for some defense contracts, and I thought, hey, this is a cool tool. Vagrant is the tool I used. Um, I'll take a shot. And after that, started programming my own. Uh, but then it was really the open source part of it that really got me hooked. Uh, the community aspect, you know? Yeah, uh, so first of all, you, you full stack developer, for those that aren't familiar, what, it's a pretty common term, but you know, what is a full stack developer? So basically, I just handle everything. Um, if you are a client, you have an idea, I will take you from the design of your actual website, which the end user will see, to the back end, which encompasses the database, uh, the load balancers, the servers. So basically all the nuts and bolts that make the pretty things that the user sees actually work. All right, wow. Yeah, you know, I think back, I, you know, I show my age a little bit, but you know, back in the 90s, I showed my wife the internet, mm -hmm. um, and she, she got uh, you know, a job. We taught ourselves HTML and actually worked for uh, some of the hospitals here in Boston doing website development, and then there were the people that, once she did kind of the front end and the layout, she handed it off to people that did the back end. Um, you know, it's, it's a whole lot bigger ecosystem now, and you've got things like, you know, where do you host it? Is it just Rackspace? Is it AWS? Um, so, you know, you, you say end-to-end, -end, you know, what, what are kind of the common tools that you're using? What are the decision points they need to make? You know, it looked at people at home probably look, it's like, oh, there's a commercial for like buildyourwebsite.com. Isn't it really simple? Uh, I mean, I guess if that's the site you want with those limited tools, it's very simple. Um, but my biggest tool that I use right now is a tool called Ansible, uh, which provisions my backend uh, with YAML files. I put in how I want my server to be spun up, how many nodes, and that pretty much takes care of all the back end. So right now, uh, one of the stacks I develop on is a Rails stack, so that's Postgres as my database, uh, Nginx server for my uh, web server, and then Ruby on Rails as my front end. All right. So, so Matt, you said you, you didn't come from kind of a technology background. You know, how fast did, it, did you did you learn these things? You know, every time you learn something new, are there seven new you know tools and operating systems you need to move? Can you walk us through a little bit about your journey? Sure. Well, it was Vagrant that really allowed me to to play around. Um, I'm sure your your listeners and viewers know. Maybe they don't, but with Vagrant, I can spin up a virtual machine and break it pretty quickly at first, and then I have to actually pay for a new computer. And I thought that was great. The, the learning by doing um, is just how I learn personally. So having the opportunity to get in there and actually build these things you know, by hand uh, really led to my, to my development. Um, I started with Code Academy, which is great for a taste. But I remember that moment, you know, finishing my lessons in Code Academy and actually turning to the computer to try and do what I just learned. And you, know, you talk about not having a backhand, well, I couldn't do anything. Like I might know how to write that program, but and actually get it to work without having the actual development background. All right, so you, you said Vagrant is what, you know, one of the main tools you use. You know, what's your interaction with kind of Vagrant, the code, the community? What, what, what do you contribute? You know, why do you contribute? Uh, so my main contribution is I've actually come from Packer, which is a tool made to work with Vagrant, which creates the boxes, uh, my development environments. Um, with those, I've opened a few GitHub issues uh, contributed to those conversations that kind of flesh out bugs. I was having an issue uh, creating snapshots on DigitalOcean, uh, getting my server up and running, um, and they were just so fast to respond to me and to help me uh, walk my way through the mistakes I was making. So that's really, and Stack Overflow, that's been a godsend for me. All right, how, how so? Uh, well, once you hit a wall with something so new for me, I don't know what to do, I have to give up. But with Stack Overflow, every issue that I've had, someone's probably already had it. And so by going on Stack Overflow, I can find those issues, try out their code, maybe they posted a gist or a pastebin file that I can take a look at. And once I kind of mess around with that, 
Usually it works. All right. Yeah, we were talking to Matt Brender earlier, and he was saying, you know, some of the kind of bug fix, you know, is something that you post bugs, maybe you help fix bugs. Um, you know, beyond that, is it, you know, are, are, there, are there features that you ask for? You know, how, how do you, what, what's the interaction you have, have there? Uh, I haven't actually requested any features yet. No. Um, you know, when you're walking into this new world, there's, there's so much out there that I'm still kind of trying to parse my way through. Um, but coming from a background of not having technology, I can say that I believe it's about building momentum. Um, what I like about the open source community is that it is not just open source in terms of contributing, you know, bugs, but it's a very welcoming and helpful community. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's tough to get over that first hurdle, making that first, uh, opening that first issue, posting that first pull request. But once you start getting there, I think it, it builds on itself. All right, so ask you a little bit, your clients, you know, how familiar are they, do they know the tools you're using and they're familiar with open source is part of it? You know, it's the magic internet tubes yeah. um, and they want a product, they have no idea what it takes to build that and they just want it immediately. Yeah, it's interesting. There was, we were looking, there was a survey that came out last week uh, talking about the future of open source. Uh, and if, if you just went back a few years ago and if people said, oh, there's open source in there, maybe I don't trust it, maybe it's not secure, um, and at least the, the hypothesis is that today actually people are actually saying, is that open source? Because I understand that it might be give me some flexibility. It, it, you know, it's more likely to be a little bit more secure. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, I mean, I only develop with open source tools um, because I trust the community to have them backed. And now that you have services like Travis CI um, and Jenkins, you can actually see them working before you actually include it in your project. I think that's a huge help for me. All right, so can you talk a little bit about what, what, what do you think about when you, you look at your career? Uh, your involvement in these tools is, uh, you know, is, is Git part of your resume uh, now built going forward? Or I think it has to be for anyone who's passionate or wants to be taken seriously in this industry. Um, if you can't work with people either remotely or uh, either remotely or just show your incremental improvements in your files, then I don't think without Git you could really participate. All right. Uh, what, what, what about the community itself? Are you active in meetups? You know, how, how do you you know find out new things? Where do you learn from? I will actually run my own Vagrant meetup in right. Boston, um, and I participate in the Boston DevOps meetups, and that's really where I get most of my, my interactions and learning tools. Is going to lightning talks. Right. people. So uh, it's interesting. DevOps. I'm, I'm curious, you know, what, what's, what's the general feel? You know, it's like, do, do your parents know what DevOps is? You know, uh, yeah, it, it, exactly. I mean, I, I think, you know, my mother, you know, said, oh, wait, I hear about this cloud thing on NPR and you were telling <laughs> me about it five years ago, uh, you know, at least. So, um, you know, what, what's the general atmosphere? You know, did DevOps, you know, is, you know, we've been talking about it in the community for a few years now. You know, there's lots of big companies in, embracing it. I know when I go to conferences, there's now even little developer you know areas inside the show you know what, what, what's your take on that if we I don't know if you're a sports guy but you know in baseball we always like to say on the cube you know you know what inning is the pitcher warming up are we in the early innings or you know what where are we in the in the DevOps uh, discussion oh man I you know I honestly don't know if I'm the best person to ask but are we college ball right yeah. now <laughs> we're still getting ready before it kind of takes over all right all right, so, so one more personal question for you here. So you're, you're from San Diego. I know we had a rough winter, but mm -hmm. you know, what, what is kind of the, the, the climate here, kind of Cambridge, Boston area, uh, and the community here? You know, what, what would you say to people if they were looking to you know, come participate, getting out of college, um, or you know, moving a company here? What, what would your advice be about this community? Well, I mean, I actually grew up here. Yeah. Uh, I would say there's maybe no better spot than if you can live through the winters, there's no better spot than Boston. Um, and we've got a lot of competition from San Francisco, but with the education background we have here, you know, MIT, Harvard, BC, BU, uh, the talent pool, the international community that's growing here, and just the, the access to capital here I've found has also been on par with any other city in the United States. So if you're interested in looking, you don't mind a, a, a slight winner here and there. The area. Yeah, well, Matt, you, you said you're in the South Shore. There's still a little bit of snow piles here, even though it is spring. You know, baseball season started, and uh, yeah, but uh, great. So, if somebody wanted to find you, you, you active on some of the social media sites, website, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, 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 what's, your, what's your digits? How do people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter at MattP182. Um, 
it's probably the best place to find me right now. All right. Hey, Matt, appreciate so much joining us uh, for, for this segment. Uh, you know, re really love digging into this with you. And uh, thank you for watching.